Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to create a quick cloth sim and then applying a nice cloth shader to it. And I'll give you some options with what you can do with it so you can create a variety of different materials. So the first thing we're going to do is just set up a collider for our cloth, which is going to be this cylinder. And we'll just make that, say, a scale of 10 on all axes. And then we can disable the grid. Then we'll stick a light in the scene and just move that into position and I'll increase the intensity of that light to 10. Next we will create a polyplane and this is going to be our cloth so we'll put it roughly above the table and then we will subdivide it to 50 by 50 and this will just give us a nice smooth cloth and when we apply this into it. Next we will create our cloth simulation by going to the FX tab, uh, selecting N cloth and create N cloth. And then we just need to make sure that we're at the start of our timeline and also that our playback speed is set to play every frame. Otherwise you'll get errors in your evaluation of the sim. And before we play that, well, we can play it at the moment. You'll see that it just falls through. There's no collider on the table currently. So we're just gonna select that table and we're going to go to end cloth and create a passive collider okay so just sim that through 120 frames and then i can select it and smooth it so that is our cloth we'll just assign a material to it now so select it and click the pixar surface shader and then we'll open up the hypershade editor and that's going to be pixar surface 5 because i've made some already so we're going to call this cloth underscore tutorial and we'll do a quick render to reference that. Okay there's our cloth simmed out and uh, there with its basic material on it. It doesn't look terrible uh, but we do want to add a little bit more to it. So what we'll do here to start with is in the Hypershade editor we're just going to use a cloth texture that is included in Maya and it can be quite powerful though it looks pretty dumb to start with. I'm just going to run the out color into the diffuse color input on the material and run the IPR so we get this sort of effect. So what we're going to need to do is increase the repeats of this um, and we'll probably set them to something quite high like 200 by 200 so we get a lot more detail there that way. However at the moment because it's kind of abstract I'm going to put this geometry in the scene so I can sort of tell how big this texture is because without some geometry it's kind of hard to tell whether it's sort of big or small or, or fine or not. So if I run the uh, IPR again, so we can see that that texture actually looks a little bit too big with something like a glass on it if it's meant to be a tablecloth. So it should be a lot finer. So we might go up to say, let's try 300 by 300. Okay, that looks fine for the moment. We will now dive back into the Hypershade Editor and the first thing we'll do is we'll add some color to it. So we've already got it going into our Diffuse Color Input so we're going to actually have to blend a color into it. So we're going to use a Pixar Blend, run the color to the top RGB color and then we're going to set the operation mode on our blend to multiply and the bottom color will set to be blue and we'll make this sort of a desaturated navy blue and then we can run the Diffuse Color into there and if we run that IPR again, we get this sort of effect. So it's sort of starting to look a bit like jeans. So why don't we roll with the jeans for the moment? I'm just gonna change it to HSV and maybe desaturate it a bit more. So we look closer at this pattern here. So it's fairly uniform at the moment. We can actually break that up a little bit by going into the cloth node and we can introduce a bit of wave to it in the U and in the V just a little bit. Then if we add some randomness, you'll see it starts to become a little bit more realistic looking. And then finally, if we adjust the width spread and the bright spread, that will sort of space out our uh, material. So it looks like it's got sort of gaps in it. So you can decide how wide or, or how stringy you want this to be. So you can get it to be quite stringy as you can see. I'm gonna do it something like this. So at the moment I'm sort of thinking about jeans um, obviously you don't normally have a tablecloth made out of jeans but this is just as an example I don't have any jeans assets uh, lying around and I thought I'd do something that you could sim yourself so that kind of looks okay 
Um, I think we can make it look a little bit more interesting with a bump map though. So let's create a PXR bump and run the result. Uh, so the out alpha from the cloth into the input bump and then the result n into the bump normal and run that IPR. So you can see adding the bump map, it's a lot more depth if you compare the two. So we're already starting to get a fairly interesting and realistic looking result just by adding that bump map. You can increase or decrease the apparentness of the bump map by changing the scale in the bump map node. Probably um, stick with 1.0 for the moment so it's easy to see from a distance as we zoom out. So we're getting some quite nice textural noise here now, um, but it's still fairly uniform in its color. So what we can do is we've already got a color node set up, but it's one flat color. So why don't we introduce a, say, fractal and a multiply it by this blue color. So we've only got one input on this here. So to multiply it, we'll have to use a second blend. Just to vis dev this fractal though, I'll just assign it into the diffuse color so I can see how large the texture is. All right, so you can see it's quite noisy, but you can see that there are some random um, value elements happening now, and you can use this with a manifold if you wish. And what that will allow you to do is if you run the result into the manifold input on your fractal, it'll automatically assign to that if you just plug it into the top input. Then you can run the IPR again, and you could say stretch it in one direction or the other. So now we've got these sort of lines going one direction. So that's cool, um, but we'll need to blend that into our color. So what we'll do is create another PXR blend and run this as, as the top RGB and then the bottom RGB can be that blue color that we already used, which is this. We may need to make it more saturated, um, but we'll just run that result RGB now into the uh, bottom RGB input of that initial blend. So what we've got happening here is our fractal multiplying by our blue color into our blend, which is multiplying by our, by our cloth color. So if we run that now uh, and plug the RGB out from the final uh, blend into there, we'll get this um, and make sure you set your uh, a node here after your fractal to multiply. Now that's quite dark and quite saturated, so we can actually just add a HSL node to control the saturation and value. So what we can do is lower the saturation a little bit and then increase the luminance. So we start to get a brighter um, overall material as you can see. So we'll zoom back in and have a look at what it looks like close up. Okay, so that's what it looked like before the initial bump map and now that's what it looks like here. So you can see adding the variation has made quite a bit of difference. Now we can go even more detailed with our colors as our cloth can have a different color per thread. So we don't want to mess with these values in our cloth node, but we want to adjust the colors of the threads. We've got two possibilities that we can use here, um, but we could actually get a few more if we wished. We can use a ramp to do this if we use a PXR ramp and then we run the result, uh, sorry, the out alpha into the spline map. And then we can multiply this into the fractal um, blend node. So we've just got this bottom color which is flat blue at the moment. So why don't we add in a couple of inputs here and we'll change this to be constant. And what this is doing is the out alpha is telling the ramp to pick one of these colors based on its value. So the cloth has a value between zero and one referring to either the dark areas which you'd see as the gaps or the lighter areas which would be the threads and there is a gradient slightly in between those so we can use that to create this sort of effect where if we say have a black color in the zero position and then anything between zero and 
0.3 will be black, but then this next color can be, say, this desaturated gray. And then this final one, we could make it anything. You can make it red if you want, and this will be sort of a fancy pair of jeans. So we can run the result RGB now into the bottom color of our Pixar blend, which is coming after our fractal. So our fractal is multiplying by these colors now, and then it's blending into here, which is also just a multiply. So all that is to say that if we do that, we get this sort of result now, which might be a bit too much. So we could push that red color down a little bit. So you only see it every now and then, or we could use a more complementary color, like a desaturated blue version of this blue, and maybe a lighter version of it as well. So then we can push it further into the middle to get more of it there, or we can push it back more. So somewhere around there looks cool. I'll zoom out a bit, and you can see as that renders up, it does make quite a big difference all the different combinations of the um, textures being multiplied by each other and we've just created a really nice procedural texture that can be used as jeans or as cloth obviously i've made it look like jeans because that's sort of just what came to mind but you could make it look like a cloth if you wish if we just change the colors really so why don't we do that finally we'll just make this more of a gray and this can be a little bit colored but we'll make it a brown and then all we want to do there to make this look look more like a tablecloth so it would be to change the width spread so all the material pieces are closer together and then just lower that ramp and then probably just reduce the randomness okay so all those threads are a lot closer together now so as we zoom out it looks a little bit better we probably just want to adjust the contrast between the high and the low value so just bring this one here down and probably the bumpiness is too high so we'll just make that much lower and then again it will just depend on your scale so probably for a finer cloth obviously you want to go to have a lot more repeats so we'll just finally go into our place to detection node for our cloth and maybe make that 500 by 500 and this should make it a fairly fine cloth material yeah and because of all the randomness of textures and things that we've got in there, it does look sort of still a little bit like jeans, but you can see now that with the fineness that it's got, it's starting to look a little bit more like a softer cloth material. Probably if we took out that fractal, it'll look a little, little bit better. But that will give you an idea of what you can do um, with the cloth node in Maya. The only other thing that you could do is if you wish, you can run the cloth alpha output into the presence generally i wouldn't do this but what happens is any of the areas that are black are going to be transparent so you can see now that this has become quite transparent if we just run a clamp from the say rgb output of the cloth into the rgb and run the rgbr output of the clamp and then we can we can increase the minimum that will make it more opaque because less light will be traveling through those areas that are light however this is something i would use sparingly it's not very good uh, on your render times um, and it does affect obviously the way the material looks quite a bit but you can see that it is transparent there um, in those tiny little holy areas that will be there now so this may be what you're after, uh, but I, like I said, I would use it sparingly. You can see how much noise this can introduce, um, and it can be different, difficult for uh, the denoiser to deal with it because you're dealing with lots of little dots, and the denoiser um, has a hard time. If there's lots of little dots, it can't quite tell whether it's texture or whether it's noise sometimes, so just bear that in mind. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Very quick and simple way to vis dev some cloth you can make it into a bunch of different things um, so have fun with it and i'll see you in the next one that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below